Good afternoon and welcome to our webinar for GPR Sole Source Enhancements Update. Um, really quickly, I just want to make sure that everyone can hear me. So on your GoToWebinar control panel, there is a raise your hand button. If you would select that, if you can hear me loudly and clearly, we will go ahead and proceed. All right, wonderful. Okay, so let's get started. Um, today's webinar is being recorded. And so we will send a link out to the recording once we get it converted over. Um, also, the way we'll handle questions today is if you will type your questions into the questions field in the GoToWebinar control panel, we will read them out loud at the end of the webinar, and we will answer them out loud. If there are questions that are asked during the webinar, we may um, answer them during the webinar via typing the questions in with the responses. Also, in the handout section, there is a copy of this presentation for your reference after the webinar, and so you will be able to download that um, once we are completed. All right, so today the purpose of our sole source enhancement is number one, we want to update the sole source form to improve the flow of information that was displayed to the supplier community. We also wanted to gain efficiencies in terms of the form routing. And approvals for the APO, COOPO, and for SPD for sole sources that were equal to or above $500,000. We also wanted to improve the professional presentation of the sole source by adding a spell checker and a consistent application of the font sizes in the application. One of our goals was also to eliminate redundant information and to add flexibility so that the purchasing professionals could determine the need for an OEM letter of exclusive capability. And we also wanted to increase the reporting capabilities. And so let's talk about what we did as far as the sole source enhancement. So first of all, the sole source enhancement will incorporate the SPD form, SPD-PS020, the form of sole source intent to award justification. So it will be electronically captured in the system now. The current form will no longer be used on or after January 11th, 2018, which is in two days. So the new source source process includes workflows for approvals from the agency procurement officer, the college university procurement officer, and or the agency sourcing division here in state purchasing. And those approval workflows are based on the dollar thresholds that are established in the policy. Um, local governments are exempt from the approval process. The sole source posting date will be the date of final approval by either the APO Coupo or agency sourcing, that will be set automatically by the system. Sole sources that are under $3,500 that are grant granted by federal funds qualify as an open market purchase only. Any sole source that's not granted with federal funds with a dollar estimate of less than $25,000 qualifies as an open market purchase only, and the system will not allow the user to post these purchases as a sole source. There will be error messages that will be displayed that will direct you on how to proceed with that. All the respective parties that are involved will receive email alerts to act on your sole source approval process. There's a procedure to challenge a solicitation or the protest instructions that will be available to external users on the GPR public bid search portal with every sole source posting except those that are exempt from sole source. Um, the current process to award the old sole source will remain as it is. So if you, have, if you have a current sole source, you will continue to go on and use the award menu to award your sole source. So let's review the approval process that's now in the system. First of all, with a state entity does, that does not have an APO or coupo listed in the GPR, the system will not allow the state agency buyer to post the sole source. 
So it's very important, number one, that you all go into the GPR to update your entity's information as far as your APO coupons and your buyers and the roles for those people. If you need assistance to do so, you can contact our help desk to um, walk through that process. Um, on the screen is a sample of the menu options that the buyer, the APO coupo, and the agency sourcing division will have access to. So the sole source menu is, is updated with new menu options. So it's post sole source notice, review and maintenance of sole source notices, and then sole source notice list awaiting APO coupo approval. So the path to get there is through the main menu, bid processing, and then the sole source notice menu. The buyer or APO and coupon will be able to see all the sole source notices that have saved under approval NOIA ready to award, awarded and canceled status. Each role will be able to view the post sole source notice and the sole source review and maintenance options menu options. The approval menu option will only be available to the APO Coupo and the agency sourcing division. So let's take a look at the post or sole source notification page. So from top to bottom, first of all, you see that the double asterisk with the red denotes that there's mandatory data that needs to go in those fields. There's also a definition of the acronyms APO, CUPO, SPD, and ASD. The sole source notice number is auto-generated, and the notice process is set to sole source notification by default. The system pre-populates the agency's name and number, the buyer's details, and the APO coupon details based on who the logged-in user is. As you go down to the lower third of the screen, it talks about now, will this purchase use federal funds? So that question has been added in there. There's also a question added in for the exempt sole source. So it has here, will this purchase use federal funds? And then the second question is, is the proposed sole source purchase exempt from DOAS authority under the State Purchasing Act? If you answer yes to that question, the language that describes the DOAS protest process will not be included in the sole source postment available to the public. The criteria for open market purchase and NOIA initiation dates will be visible as well. And so this is what the post of sole source notification page looks like at this stage. As you go down further, this next field is purpose of the sole source. On the original form, it used to be notice description, and so now it says purpose of the sole source. The scope of work and market research are incorporated from the state purchasing form STD-PS020. And the supplier name, contact person, email, and phone number are also incorporated in the form. So the remaining fields that you have are brought over directly from the current form and they are mandatory. All right, now we have the next um, field, which is complete the following for justifying a sole source. And then we have exclusive capability. So the justification of sole source brand and exclusive capability, that includes the requirement of a letter from the original equipment manufacturer, and these are incorporated in the system as well. For the exclusive capability field, you will provide a detailed description of the proposed source's unique capabilities to perform the work and why it's the only source. A letter from the OEM or publisher is required only if there is no other item or product that would serve the same purchase or function. 
So once you complete those two fields, then the next step is to assign the NIGP codes. The system forces you to add the NIGP codes before you can proceed. So when you click on that assign NIGP codes, you may then select the NIGP codes by numeric or by keyword search. There is no limit to the number of codes that you can add. Once you assign the NIGP codes, you can now add documents, and there's no limit to the number of documents either. Once you review all this information, you will submit the notice for approval button, and that will initiate the approval process. So at the bottom of this slide, you're going to see the option to either edit or submit the sole source form. So now the sole source form will proceed through the approval process depending on the estimated value. So let's talk about those sole source approval guidelines. For a sole source that's posted by the agency buyer, if it's from $25,000 to $499,999 and must be approved by the agency's APO or CUPO. If it's greater than or equal to $500,000, it must first be approved by the agency's APO or CUPO and then approved by the agency sourcing division at SPD. For a sole source posted by the APO, if it's from $25,000 to $400,999, there is no approval needed. But if it's more equal to or greater than $500,000, it must be approved by agency sourcing. If the sole source is posted by agency sourcing on behalf of a state agency, there's no approval necessary. So once it's going through the approval workflow, the respective parties will be notified via email after the sole source is approved or rejected. So for example, if the buyer has posted the sole source and the APO coupon received an email alert to approve, once the APO coupon approves it, the initial buyer will receive an email with the approval or rejection. If the sole source is approved under $500,000, the system automatically sends an email to the suppliers. And then the buyer will receive an email for every completed action for the specific sole source. So any function that happens with that sole source, the buyer will receive an email for every action that's completed. The STD Agency Sourcing Division will get an email alert based on the dollar amount of the sole source from the APO or CUPO. So if the sole source value is equal to or greater than $500,000, once it is approved by the APO or CUPO, SPD agency sourcing will receive an email alert for that next approval. The APR coupon or state purchasing agency sourcing may approve or reject the sole source with justification via a direct via a direct link in the email, and that link is approved sole source notice. You don't have to be logged into the GPR to do this. So here on the screen, you can see an example of what happens when you click the approved sole source notice button. This is what the sole source approval process looks like, where you would enter your email address and you would either approve or reject it, and you would give your justification. On this same screen, you have the ability as the APO Coupo or State Purchasing Agency Sourcing to view the bid information. So you can see the sole source notice details by clicking on the View Sole Source Notice link. The suppliers will get email alerts once the sole source is approved and posted. 
The initial buyer also gets an email confirmation of the bid notice that's sent out to the suppliers. And so the buyer will get an email that tells, tells um, he or she, or tells him or her, I'm sorry, how many suppliers received the email. So as you can see on the screen here, it says the email message was sent to 15 supplier contacts. So let's take a look now at the sole source status. Um, entity users with system access will be able to see the status of their entity's sole source events. And the navigation is provided on the screen that directs you on how to access the sole source status. So you will go to the GPR main menu, bid processing, sole source notice menu. Then you will go to the review and maintenance of sole source notices. You can look at the ones that are under approval. As far as the history of the sole source, users will be able to view the history with the status at any stage. And so here on the screen, again, we have the navigation that will allow you to view what the history of that sole source is. So when you click on history, you will be able to see the approval history of the sole source. So here on the screen, it shows you here that through the buyer and the APO and then SPD. After the NOIA is complete, at the bid award processing page, buyers will be allowed to enter the Team Georgia Marketplace requisition ID and the number of protests, if any, while you're awarding the sole source. It's not mandatory though, okay? So this, this information is on the current SPD PS020 form. So let's talk about the protest instructions. Remember we talked earlier about the question about the exempt purchases and the language that would be included for the procedure to challenge a solicitation. So if you answered yes to the purchase being exempt, this information will not be available to external users. Um, otherwise, the public will be able to reference this information on how to challenge a solicitation. And there's a direct link here, so there is no need for them to contact the help desk. So it has all the information for, for the uh, protest information, whether they want to go via mail or email, or they can do it through the direct link here. All right, so what we'll do now um, is basically go and take some questions. So overall, what we've done so far is just provided you with an overview of what the enhancement will look like and basically showing you how the form will be incorporated into the system. And so what we'll do now is um, entertain questions. If you have questions about the sole source process specifically outside of the form, um, you would contact our process improvement team or agency sourcing. Um, otherwise, we're going to go ahead and take some questions. Um, also, if there are questions that we are unable to answer today, we will go back and do some research and send the responses back to everyone that was on the webinar. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at some questions. 
Um, the first question is, can locals use the sole source notification in the GPR even though they are not required or will it mess up the system? So the answer is yes, locals can use a sole source notification, but there will not be an approval process for the locals. Another question is how is the exclusive capability different from the sole source justification? And the exclusive capability is a detailed description of the proposed source's unique capabilities and or the personnel to perform the work. And it justifies your needs and your unique requirements. Another question is how do we identify the agency sourcing description? Uh, agency sourcing the vision, I'm sorry. So the agency sourcing division is the sourcing division here at state purchasing. And so that's set up in the system that it will be routed to agency sourcing. And they have their approval process. Another question is, if rejected by the CUPO due to a correction, does the buyer have to start over or just make a correction and resubmit? Okay, so if it's rejected and a correction is needed, you can edit it. If there's a major requirement change, you will have to re you will have to start over and resubmit. Another question is, what about the continuation of services where there is no OEM letter to post everything? For example, continuing work of a consultant. Oh, is the, is the OEM letter required to post everything? No, it is not. Another question is, can the APO or CUPO delegate approval to their assistant APO or CUPO? Can there be two people at the APO or CUPO level? Just one at a time. No, just one at a time. Another question is, will a help guide be provided? And yes, there will be a, a, a quick reference guide provided. Another question is, will the APO be able to change information within the sole source when reviewing it, or will the person who created the information have to make revisions? Yes, the APO coupon will be able to change the information. Can you mention if there is any change to the process or sole source brand? for sole source brand. Yeah, there's no change to that process. All right, the next question is, what is it meant by the section that asks if the purchase is exempt from DOAS authority? If exempt NIGP, it seems that a sole source would not be necessary. So is this referring to an exempt NIGP or something else? Okay, so the process isn't referring to exempt NIGP codes. It is, it is referring to types of locations like construction. Can one buyer within an organization post a sole source on another buyer's behalf? We have an express that can post it actually. Mm -hmm. Like if you are a buyer, I can post also. But not So 
So the sole source system is going to show who's logged in. So whoever's information is used to log in, that will be who will be, it will reflect as posting it. If the AP or Recupo is on vacation, can someone else approve during their absence? No, and we're gonna we'll take that back to see if we can um, work around that. Can you provide more detail on when the letter from the supplier must be posted with the sole source notice? So the requirement for the letter from the supplier is based on the requirement of the sole source. So if it's required that the OEM letter be posted, then that's what you would do, but it's, it's based on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, so again, we have a question about the AP or Coupo is out of the office for like a week, for example. Um, we'll get back to you all on that to see how um, we can work around that. Another question is, um, I have some questions specific to TCSG. Can we have a conversation outside the webinar? Yes. And we'll get back to you on that, Toya. So the last question that we have is, can the buyer and the APO coupo be the same? And the answer is yes. All right, so does anyone else have any questions? Okay, so again, please remember that the handout um, for the PowerPoint is in the handout section, so you can take that back if you um, need, you know, additional reference information. Oh, we have one more question. If the APO posts the sole source, they'll be reflected as a buyer? It, it will depend on the... Okay, so and that that's just based on the dollar amount. So if it's less than five hundred thousand, it will go ahead and post since you're the APO. Um, otherwise, if it's more than five hundred thousand, it will go to, through the approval process for agency sourcing. So if it's less than five hundred thousand, it does just automatically post with the APO's information as the buyer. The system will show whoever's login information was used to post, so that would be who it will post. You can't change the name on it. So the buyer's name field is read only and it's automatically populated based on the login credentials. So we have another webinar tomorrow morning. at 10.30. And so um, we are recording this webinar, and again, we will have another session tomorrow at 10.30 to just basically go over the same information. We may have some different types of questions, but feel free if you want to log into that one too. Um, but thank you all very much for taking your time out to um, attend our webinar today. And again, we will send the responses out to everyone, to all of the questions. And for those of you that want specific answers based on your entity, we will contact you directly as well. Okay, thank you very much and have a good day.